crusty crab pizza is the pizza for you and me hello and welcome to my channel it's a brand new year i hope you are surviving thriving or just navigating the current agony of the human experience yeah usually i have a little anecdote at the front of these videos like explaining why i chose to make whatever it is that i made but uh, I, I don't have that this week. I simply wanted to make a fox, and so I simply just made one. So in the absence of all that, I thought I would just give like a quick thank you to anybody who has watched these videos, these clay videos over the past couple months, or liked something I put on Instagram, or bought something from my shop. Like, hello, are you kidding me? At first it was like really just my family and my friends uh, watching these and like indulging in this little hobby of mine but now like some more people have started to watch and purchase from me question mark like i sent clay creatures all over to new york tennessee colorado oregon hawaii what to some people that i do not know i have a lot of art prints in my home from independent artists i found either on instagram or on etsy and they're some of my like most treasured items. I see them every day, I love to look at them. And so to think that somebody saw something that I made and was like, e yeah, I want that in my house to look at is like such a cool feeling. So thank you if you have supported me in any way since I started doing this, uh, I really appreciate it. Okay, now shall we get into the fox? Yes, we shall. Alright, here we go. As usual, I'm using Amico air dry clay. This figure is starting out the same as any other figure, as a blob. I'm going to build a head shape on top with a little snout and space for some ears. And then I'm taking two little nubs, little tic tacs of clay, and fusing those onto the lower half of the front of the body. I'm only gonna do front legs. I'm not even gonna stress over making some back legs. We're taking a little bit of creative liberty here and saying that those back legs are tucked up under that butt. I've got a little tail shape here, which I'll need to attach, which brings me to this next point. I got some Newell clay tools for Christmas. Uh, my family that's been living in Japan for the past couple years brought me this. It's a little metal tool for scoring. How cool is that? It worked perfectly, roughing up the texture here so I can attach the tail and the body together. And then I'm just going to fill in all of those seams with some slip to avoid any cracking. Now, my idea for this fox was to make it like a little wilderness explorer. First, I wanted like a backpack and a little hat. But then the backpack part proved uh, too difficult and I gave up on that. And then the hat quickly morphed into a mushroom type of hat because I, I have an addiction. That, that is what I like and I can't help it. So she's still a little explorer. She's just got a mushroom cap. And she can't have her ears squished. So I added some ears on top of the mushroom as if they've just like busted through. That, that, that is the way. And I'm also going to cut a tiny little slice out of the edge of the cap here. And then we've got to add all those good, good bumps on top. And yes, this, this has potential, I think, but it needs something more. So how about a perch for her to sit on? How about like a magical little stump? Yeah, I, I think yes. I just formed out a little pedestal about her size and attached some pieces to the side to look like some gnarled roots, uh, make the shape a little bit more interesting, I think. And then I'm going to cut out uh, an opening in one side. Maybe uh, somebody could live in there. Maybe like a little, a little chipmunk, a gnome, I don't know. It's mysterious. And then I was like, I gotta get some different textures onto this thing. So maybe we've got some moss grown on the side here. Maybe a few mushrooms growing on the bark. You know, the ones that grow on logs or trees that look like little shelves or steps that a fairy would hop across. You, you know the ones. I added some different little mushrooms onto the moss on the side here. And then I'm carving out the rings in the center of our stump. I made these carvings a little bit uh, deeper, thicker than I thought they should be because I figured by the time I layered water and clay and paint up in there that it would make them look smaller. I think I think I overdid it. They're, they're a little a little too thick, but that's okay. I digress. 
Now this is another new tool that I got for Christmas. I'm not sure what the technical name for these are, but they're really just carving tools with different shaped tips on the end. So I took one here with a pointed tip and I'm just using that to carve out some markings and texture in the tree bark. And yeah, that tool made it super easy and fast and I really like the effect. So 10 out of 10, I like those. Now we fast forward two days in the future. Here our figures are all dry. You can see that they have changed color. And I noticed the fox had a few spots of texture that I didn't really want. So I've got a piece of very fine grit sandpaper here. The brand Sculpey makes a sandpaper specifically for clay. And that's what I'm using here to just smooth out the surface a little bit. And then we are on to painting. I'm priming them first with white acrylic. So I have a nice neutral canvas to work with. The clay can dry really porous too, so this first layer really fills in all of that extra texture for me. And now we're on to the fun part, breaking out all the colors. I started with the stump first actually, because I was somehow more excited about painting this. I got, I got big plans, you know? I'm doing several coats of a warm golden brown tone all around the bark and then a lighter creamy brown for the innards, the core. Now you'll see me here taking some watered down browns all through the creases of the rings and the bark trying to build up some dimension, but you'll notice that it dries really patchy and kind of kind of messy looking. You see that? See that up top? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't like that. So, I had to regroup and then full disclosure, I did repaint this stump several times off camera until it was looking regular. So we, we cut to that now. And then this was actually my favorite part of painting the stump, uh, the, the decoration, decorating my stump. I'm bringing in some different colors here and when all else fails, just cover it with moss. That's what I say. I'm using a few different shades of green here to build up some moss, make it really, really pop, you know? And then after all that, let's, let's throw some flowers on there. Sure, that's pretty. Can, can flowers even sprout from moss? I don't know, but it doesn't matter if the moss is enchanted, which this clear, clearly is. And now we get to color in our little fungi and that is, that is looking nice, I think. Okay, now we pause on the stump. We're going back over to the fox. Let's cover her in like a bright, fun orange color. That's gonna need a couple coats. Okay, um, do we like this? Mm, no, no, she looks like a traffic cone. Let's try again. Okay, so I picked more of a burnt orange color and yeah, yeah, I like that better. Now I did already leave her belly white, but we're gonna go over those edges with some more white paint with more of a, a loose brush. I want the strokes here to show we've got like a suggestion of fur. I'm also gonna give a white tip to the tail and give her some black socks and black pointy ears. I also added a little bit of brown to that tail just to give it a little bit extra color variation. And then we're gonna hit that hat with a nice bright pop of red and go over each spot with a dot of white paint. Then I did give her a cute little black nose, but decided to pass on the eyes. I felt like any addition of eyes that I could make would just make this thing look hella derpy. So I passed on that, but I still felt like it was missing something. So I took that initial bright orange that I used before and added some markings onto her coat. And I thought that looked really cute. After signing each one, it's time for the final step. Here it is, the gloss. I did about five coats of this on each figure, waiting for them to dry in between layers. And by waiting for them to dry, I meant putting them in front of a little fan because I, I can't wait that long. And after all that was set, here is how it turned out. I think it looks pretty cute. I especially love how the stump turned out actually. My only gripe with the fox is that the lighter markings that I made on the coat really darkened after the top coat and they're much less visible now, which was um, disappointing, but what can you do? I still really like how it turned out. I'm glad I kept these figures separate instead of fusing the fox to the log because then you can like move it around, pose it how you want, turn the log, whatever. I think, I think that's fun. But that, uh, that about does it for this video. This fox is listed in my Etsy shop if you are interested. I will leave the link in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.